All right, so I'm just gonna go over a little bit of what went into the final mix for the Varials video I most recently posted. And I mainly wanna talk about their guitar and their bass tones because the way I mix drums is just kind of standard for how I mix drums for most bands, like at least heavy bands. Um, but what, I, what really stood out to me during the mix stream was the way that their guitar and bass tones really complemented each other and made their, you know, the final product sounded so heavy. So I'll just play real quick for reference, the drums, the bass, and guitar with the mix, and then I'll just kind of break it down from there. So when I'm listening to that, what I'm noticing right away is I hear a really defined bass tone in the background and a guitar tone that doesn't really overbear it in any way. And same with the drums, the guitar kind of just fits right where it should and everything just kind of, uh, it's very cohesive. So when you listen to just the guitar and the bass, you can kind of hear right away, um, I'm gonna take actually all the EQ and compression off of it. You'll hear right away that the guitars are not scooped they're not overly bright or low and heavy. So, you know, sometimes there's too much low end in the cab and things get muddy real quick. Or on the other hand, there's not enough mid range and the guitar is just too scooped. So this is just straight up as it hit the board, bass and guitar. So obviously it's not as bright as the finished product and that's because of you know the EQ and compression that I add but just going straight to the board the bass and the guitar go really well together. The bass kind of has that definition of the notes that just adds to the guitar so you can kind of always hear what's going on because you know the bass and the drums need to work together as well and the guitar can just kind of fill out the rest. So guitar and bass You can already hear every note that's being played and you know the low end is not too full but it's obviously not empty so i just felt like the bass and the guitar complement each other really well just before any mixing was done at all so as far as my bass tone and what i did to it it's really nothing crazy it'll sound like a lot but it really isn't i'll just go ahead and play with and without the eq Um, the 120 hertz boost is just kind of like the area in the mix where I felt separated the bass from the kick. So I kind of keep my kick boost somewhere lower and my bass boost is usually somewhere higher. So between 100 and 200 for bass and then like below 100, between 100 and just 50 uh, for my kick. So that's just kind of like where I chose to bring it out. And then this band here is just it's not really cleaning it up, it's just making it sound even more defined. There's always a mid-range frequency that just kind of sounds um, like throaty to me in a bass. I know it's weird to say throaty when you're talking about a bass guitar, but I just kind of find that one frequency and take it out just to give a little bit more definition to the bass guitar. Other than that, it's just a little bit of a top end boost because I really liked the way that the distortion was defined in this bass tone and I was not afraid to boost it at all. And then I just use a multiband compressor on it. And when you look at the multiband compressor, it's really nothing crazy other than the mid range is constantly being slammed by the compressor, but I'm also boosting it to put it right back where it was. So all I'm really doing there is bringing a little bit mid range back into the tone and I'm just keeping the low and the top end under control. So 
So it's really nothing crazy. You don't see a lot of jumping up and down with the compressor here. Uh, for the most part, I keep it very fast, and once it's on, it's on, and it really doesn't move around that much. And this side shade and band here is just, uh, you know, the area between 50 and 60 hertz is getting compressed when the kick is hit. Without it, you might hear a little bit of a difference. I usually just do that to make sure that the kick always has space in the mix to punch through. So it's not a lot, but it's kind of just like always my backup plan to make sure that the kick and the bass work well together. I usually take care of it in the EQ, but it never hurts to have something there just to make sure that the kick always can breathe through the bass guitar. As far as their guitar tone straight to the board, like I said, it's not scooped. It's not low end heavy. It's also not super bright either. It's kind of right in that sweet spot for this type of music, especially in the lower tunings. So you'll see that my EQs look very similar and I'll play the guitar with and without the two EQs. So, not really anything crazy that I feel like I need to get too in detail about, but you will notice I do this low end cut on both these guitars and that's usually just cab resonance. I kind of sweep through the low end and try to find a frequency that kind of gets muddied up all the way throughout the performance. And it's usually just because it's a hollow stage with a cabinet and a mic on a stand. And there's usually some kind of resonant frequency that just kind of bugs me throughout the whole thing. So I can boost it so you can hear it. And on the other guitar. So what that also does is it opens up room for my bass guitar to breathe through, so it never really hurts for me to go through and do that. So I'll play the guitar and bass uh, without their EQ, and then with their EQ. So um, both guitar tracks and bass track all had some brightness added to them, but from the start, they were already very cohesive together as a unit. And as far as guitar compression goes, it's really, I don't even use compression every time I mix a video. Guitar compression on these live tracks, very quickly it'll turn into just bringing out more of like that stage resonance, the cymbals in the background, the vocal bleed from the monitors. So once again, it's not really anything crazy. It's really not an audible compression by any means. Sometimes it's just a safeguard for me to make sure that um, when, you know, people do their pedals that add the constant delay or the whammy effect or anything like that. It just kind of makes sure that it's never going to get crazy loud compared to what I want it to be. And on top of that, I use a multi mono, not a stereo limiter to make sure that both sides are hitting the same exact volume throughout. Because my main goal when I'm mixing these is to make sure that once I hit play at the beginning, it sounds the same all the way through. That's why there's a limiter on the bass as well. So here's the bass limiter, and then here's the guitar limiter. It's the same thing on both sides, but it treats left and right as two separate things, rather than as a whole what volume the sides combined are hitting. So sometimes I can, you know, I can limit harder on the right if that guitar gets a little quieter sometimes, or, you know, I can back it off on one side. So the limiters just kind of keep everything 
um, you know, in check. So yeah, hopefully that gives you like a little bit of insight for, you know, if you're interested in the mixing side of things or just like how to build your tones as a band. What they're doing here is a perfect example of, I feel in heavy music, how you should build your tones. You've got a really defined um, bass tone that isn't overly distorted. It's very easy to get overly distorted on bass tones. I hear it all the time where I'm actually cutting top end just to make sure it's not hurting our ears when we're listening back to it. And like the guitar being heavy, but not scooped. Very flat tone that's very easy to work with. And like I said, drums, vocals, it's kind of the same way I always mix drums and vocals. Any of you who have been to my live streams before pretty much know there's a routine that I go through when it comes to these things with heavy music. But, you know, not everyone gets to make it to the live streams. And I do hope to see more of you in the live streams. And, um, you know, the link's been at the bottom of the video the whole time. So if you guys like videos like this, let me know. I'm more than happy to do them after every single upload. I just don't like to disrupt the flow of what you guys like versus what you don't want to see on my channel. But um, this year has been a lot of growth for this channel that I kind of wasn't ready for. And I'm just kind of trying to keep thinking for new things to do to make it more exciting for you guys. I know a ton of you talk about multicam um, and it's something I do want to do. It's a lot of extra work. And uh, I just want to make sure that I can keep putting out quality content. And I don't want to sacrifice quality just for adding more cameras and stuff like that. So it is something I'm thinking about. Uh, I read all your comments. Don't worry. So hopefully you guys liked this. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more videos like this. I can even go back and do older videos. Um, I'll be mixing the rest of this show, Counterparts, uh, Stray from the Path. Chamber, Greyhaven, all those bands will get mixed in the next week or two here. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing the, you know, kind of the thought process behind how I mix the tracks. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.